If you would have sat out your entire season as a freshman, do you think you would have learned your lesson? Ooh, um, no. I think it took me having the biggest fear of my entire life, failure, come to fruition. And failure wouldn't have happened for me if I didn't get to the success that I got. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you think they would have disciplined you? Um, I think they could have. I think what I was doing in the off season and what I was doing in my workouts and who I was as a team leader, right. coming back with the Heisman Trophy, they should have benched me. They should have suspended me. But what I was doing, hey, you can't smoke weed. <laughs> Man, give me the fattest, dude. Give me the fattest one you got, Talk about us. Bought a box of white out white grapes. We ain't even slowing down nothing over here. This is what we're doing. And, like, from that, okay, so you win the Heisman. Yeah. We come back. We play Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. Smash it. Smack. Okay? After that, that night after the game is the infamous sparklers in the mouth with the Dom and the Burberry scarf. Yeah. Right after. This is where like it starts and it's like we just smacked our old rival in the Big 12 in Jerry World in front of 105 right on New Year's Day. This is where the ego, this is where the you know, this is where you shift from, you know, Johnny Manziel into Johnny Football, the little transition mm -hmm. and then from there it's Mr. it's Johnny Football. Yeah. And, and now there's no more self-doubt. Now there's you, no more self-doubt cuz I know what I'm doing in practice. I know what I'm doing when I see cover 2 and I'm like whole shot I'm toying with them in practice. They're mad. They, I mean, the only thing they have on me in practice in the setting that I'm seeing the live rep bullets fire is they can't tell when a sack happens in practice because we ain't sacking people. Right. And you know, in a game, you know, practice, I'm running and give somebody a little move and I'm just looking at him like, ain't no way you making that tackle on the field, buddy. You can hop and hoop around and do your whole defensive <laughs> thing all you want, but you know, out there, under them lights, no that chance. ain't gonna happen, brother. It ain't. Gonna, it's not gonna happen. Right. And that's not me speaking out of my ass. It, I I got right. film. Right. You know, I got I got stuff to show you that like I wasn't what I was more than what you thought I was, especially as a running quarterback. I led the SEC. Wow. Fourteen hundred yards rushing in my freshman year. Wow. It's documented. The first freshman in NCAA history to pass for 3,000 yards and carry and rush for 1,000 yards in the same season. The first player to pass for 300 yards and rush for 100 yards in the same game three times. Broke Archie Manning's 43-year-old record for 520 yards of, set, of a total offense with 576. Owns all these freshmen's record. 11-2, and two, ranked number five, best since 1956. Beat Oklahoma 41-13 in the Cotton Bowl. Produced 516 yards of offense, four touchdowns, with a record 229 yards rushing. When you look, when you, do you understand at the time what you're actually doing? Um, when the ESPN Heisman list came out about week eight, nine, is when I started to kind of see like, whoa, because this is, you know, my life growing up with my boys was NCAA football, the video game, the road to glory, the road to the Heisman creating a player and being able to go do these things, pick your school, go to the, you know, do all of that. And now I'm living it. Right. So the focus doesn't shift to like getting the Heisman. It just focuses on like taking this team to heights that we haven't been before. Mm -hmm. And when you walk into Tuscaloosa, Alabama and do what happened that day, something that leaves a legacy, what, 2012, it's 2012 years later, mm -hmm. where I walk down the street every day of my life and somebody comes up and dabs me up and goes, 15 and a half point underdogs, Alabama, I'll never forget that day for the rest of my life. That's what kind of impact that day had on college football. And I hear it every day, see it every day. You see Alabama on the schedule uh, and you're on the Heisman watch list. You mentioned your 15 point underdogs and you understand what Alabama is. That's Coach Saban. You know the, the dogs that he has on that roster. You know the dogs that he sends to the NFL every year, multiple. What's going through your mind? Do you ever think, man, if I can go to Alabama, if I can go to Tuscaloosa and beat Bama, ooh, they got to take notice. Can't think like that. Can't think like that and be successful because you're putting pressure on yourself that's unneeded. Okay. I got 95% of the country that's saying Alabama's going to beat us. What do we have to lose? Right? I remember being on the bus on the way of the game and putting on the movie 300. 
this part comes on where it's give to them nothing, but take from them every single thing, everything. And that was my mindset going into the game that like everybody in this stadium expects you to lose. Everybody in this state is rooting against you. Mm -hmm. We got maybe 20, 30,000 loyal Aggies scattered through about in the stands. We already lost two games that year. Right. What's the third going to do? You know, we're out of the SEC title. We're out of, you know, the national championship conversation. Let's just try and go ball. And Cliff Kingsbury put together an unbelievable game plan for us offensively.